if you want to stimulate demand, you give it to the poor, not the rich. The rich don't spend anywhere near as much or near as rapidly. That's one reason why they're rich. Yeah. Um, so if you want to stimulate the economy, it's the last thing you do is make the rich richer. But that's what QE did. Now, because, again, central banks are staffed predominantly by neoclassical economists who are living in this fantasy world in which the government's a bad thing, even though they're bloody well employed by the government, um, they, they will fall back on those conventional tools. And what we're seeing it now is a huge increase in, again, QE still happening, making the wealthy wealthier. And that's where the K-sharp recovery is coming from. Now, that is adding to the inequality that the private capitalist system caused itself through the increase in private debt during the boom. So they're making the symptom worse and saying that's going to cure the disease. What would you do if you were the head of uh, the Fed or ECB right now? I'd do the, the modern debt jubilee. Mm -hmm. I'd create, and that's a treasury operation. The treasury has to be involved in that. I, again, the example I'm giving in the, in the book I'm writing right now is $100,000 per uh, adult over 15 in America. And mm -hmm. that adds up to slightly more than a year's GDP, which is slightly more than two thirds the level of private debt. Uh, and, and you could therefore reduce the debt load from 150% of GDP to 50% of GDP. You could relatively democratize share ownership because the, the, it would tend to be people who you know, workers and lower middle class people who are the beneficiaries who didn't have as much debt as, as wealthier people and or speculators. Um, so you democratize share ownership, you'd actually boost the potential spending power out of that, you'd reduce the debt load on the economy, which would make people less, uh, less cautious about spending because they wouldn't be worried about hanging on to money to service their debt. So I do a modern debt jubilee. That would mean we could come out of this crisis with an economy less financially encumbered and potentially have a boom afterwards rather than the slump I expect we're going to fall into. What is your view on uh, ECB policies? What do, what, do, what do you think about the ideas of the uh, digital currency introduction? I'm actually in favor of central bank digital currencies simply because one reason central banks make the bad decisions they do right now is they have no other conduit uh, for their policy apart from the accounts of financial institutions at the central bank. So it's very easy for the central banks to say, we're going to put $80 billion per month into the accounts of financial institutions because they literally have those accounts at the central bank. Now, if you and I had an account there as well, then it would be feasible to say, well, let's do it through that account rather than having to go through private bank accounts. Mm -hmm. uh, that would still involve, I mean, the, 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 the central bank could hypothetically um, buy our debt office, you know, and, and value that it's bought the debt and has a share in our homes. So it could do a fictional version of what it's done in, in real terms with QE, but generally speaking, that would be sitting there as a, as a way that the treasury could rapidly provide a, a stimulus uh, to the private sector without having to do its own, you know, sometimes crazy spending to do that. And um, yeah, and, and there's other advantages as well, but I, I would like to see central bank digital currencies come in. That's one thing that some central banks are talking about doing that I think is something we need for the future. Uh, which countries are in the worst position in terms of indebtedness, in your view? Oh, well, America, uh, fundamentally, because it's, it, 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 if you look at the long-term history of the place, it, its best performance uh, is, is when it's got a debt of about one third where it is right now. Okay. Uh, and then Denmark, Australia, um, the Netherlands, uh, all these countries have got enormous debt levels. Often their debt levels are just subsidized by having an export surplus. So they've turned the export surplus into a stimulus for high house prices. Um, but because they have the export surplus, they can run a, you have the private sector to be running a large uh, deficit with the banks and still accumulating a net positive outcome. I, I find the countries that have let them to themselves turn a trade surplus into a massive level of private debt, they're probably the ones that I think are most badly encumbered. Mm -hmm.